We're now going to turn back to immunotherapy of cancer. As you know, if your tumor is antigenic, the number of miracle drugs that we have is quite impressive. What happens when the tumor is not recognized by the immune system? Our next speaker is Dr. Mark Cobalt, who was recently recruited to the Mass General Cancer Center as an associate professor of medicine and has been very focused on neoantigens in tumors. Mark. Thank you. Uh, Great. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here. Innovation is uh, definitely something very, very uh, core to my heart. So I'm going to talk about an uh, cancer antigenicity and how we can both discover new types of antigens that are expressed at the surface of cancer, and also how we can modify the antigens that are expressed in cancer to actually co-opt other types of T cells into the tumor microenvironment. And so with the first slide, um, this is, um, uh, you know, the, the, the heart of immune oncology is the immune synapse, where you have uh, the, the T cell here, um, which is targeting the tumor cell here, and this immune synapse is where all the action is, and at the center of that is, of course, an antigen, in this case, a tumor antigen, and, and it's this signaling cascade that, that, that follows um, antigen, uh, antigen recognition by the T cell that leads to killing, so this is the kiss of death that also occurs at this same synapse. And in some ways, one of the problems that have been, has been highlighted, particularly in those types of cancers which lack um, high burdens of tumor antigens, is the lack of, of antigens that are present on, on some types of tumors. Um, and also, I think another big problem for the field is actually many of the patients are obviously fairly old, and their immune repertoires um, are, 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 are low. And actually, they simply don't have T cells present that can recognize their own tumors. And so, in the first part of the talk, I would like to touch on these post-translational neoantigens, and we have now dis d d um, um, identified phosphorylated antigens, glycosylated antigens, and methylated antigens, and I'm going to focus here on phosphorylated antigens. These are antigens that are derived from signaling pathways and part of the phosphoproteome. And the first um, uh, section here is a slide from a recent Nature paper by Genentech, and which really uh, highlights the problem. So in this one cell line here, after it was sequenced, it was found to have over 28,000 um, mutations within, within, within the exome re region. But despite having 28,000 of these mutations, this yielded only 170 um, antigens that were thought to bind to the MHT class 1 molecules. And actually only seven of those were shown to be present at the surface of the tumor. And the immune response, and these are, this is an immunocompetent mouse, was only interested in three of those. So you've got this huge funnel. So one of the um, things that we've done is actually, if, we, if our starting point is here, actually just looking at what's on the surface of a cancer cell, and then after that, following, work out which T cells are recognizing some of these antigens. And so in our technology, we elute peptides from the surface of, of, of tumor cells, um, and then we characterize these using mass spectrometry. And we go through an enrichment step where we actually fish out just those uh, modified peptides and further characterize those. And our reasoning is that these peptides may actually be more interesting to the immune response than the non-modified uh, antigens. And actually, we've, we've published um, structural studies on these, and these antigens are extremely interesting. The phosphate group is typically in the center of the, of, of the MHC class 1 binding, binding um, binding groove. They're very abundantly found on the surface of tumors. They're differentially expressed between tumors and healthy tissues. And also, uh, unlike many mutational new antigens, these, this class of antigens is actually shared both between tumor types and within tumor types. And we found that um, immunity in healthy donors in particular targets many of these antigens. And this immunity tends to, tends to wane in patients that have cancer. And so just as an example, I'd like to look, uh, show you some data from, uh, unpublished data from colorectal carcinoma. And you can see here, if we elute the phosphopeptides from the surface of, of, of colorectal tumor, we do find a few phosphopeptides in normal colon. But if we look at colorectal cancers, we see a marked increase in the numbers of phosphopeptides uh, present. And actually what we've also found is in the metastasis, and this is a, the, the same tumor, this is a metastatic nodule from the same tumor, we see vastly increased numbers of, of phosphorylated and mutated antigens. And so therefore, in contrast to, to, to many modalities of cancer therapy, the antigenicity of tumors actually increases as they develop. And so at least from an immunological perspective, it actually begs the question whether it's easier to, to actually target um, um, metastatic disease 
than primary diseases because it's so antigenically dis dissimilar. And actually, many of these phospheropeptides, if you go back to the tumor and you pull out T cells and ask the question, does any of the T cells in the tumor recognize these phosphoantigens? We find that they do. And so you can readily um, pull out T cells from the tumor which actually recognize those phosphoantigens. And in more recent data, we've, we've started cloning T cell receptors using capture technologies, which we hope that we can translate back into the clinic as a therapeutic. So what about those patients that lack immunity? Well, one of the things that was apparent during the original studies is that many of the peptides that are displayed on the surface of cancer actually have a very low affinity for their MHC class 1 molecules. And so that actually presents an opportunity because at the surface of the cell, you will have empty HLA molecules. And if you just provide a really dominant antigen, let's just say from a virus like cytomegalovirus present, then you can actually re-engineer the surface of the cell to make the tumor appear as if it's um, infected with a virus. And then you can lean on a very ad abundant and potent arm of the adaptive immune response rather than relying on cancer-specific cancer immunity. And so this was our concept. We would have this antibody peptide conjugate where we would attach to a, a standard therapeutic antibody a peptide payload, and the payload would contain a proteolytic uh, release system, so a nano switch, uh, which would release this uh, immunodominance um, CMV-derived antigen. And in this way, the antibodies would bind to the tumor cells. Um, the proteases that tumors naturally um, express would clip off those peptides, and those peptides would then bind to those empty MHC molecules. And in that way, the, you would actually paint the surface of the tumor with immunodominant antigens and make the, to the immune response um, the, the, the tumor appear as if it's virally infected. And so one of the advantages of this technology, as we're showing here with rituximab, is you can differentially target lymphoma cells over healthy B cells. And so if you just sprinkle free peptide on both either cell, then the CMB T cells will recon recognize both. But if you use this complex, only the malignant cell is recognized. And, it's only, and that's because it's only the malignant cell that cleaves off those peptides and allows them to fall into MHC molecules. And we've used this technology and taken it, in, um, taken it further and, and really shown that you can use pretty much any antibody to repurpose it in, in this format. They don't have to be internalizing, they can be surface bound. Um, and so we use gemtuzumab and flizumab in AML. We've shown that trastuzumab will work in breast cancer. Uh, Cetuximab will work for both EGFR expressing uh, breast cancer and for colorectal cancer. Um, so really it's a, a new technology that allows you to, to, rather than change the T cells of the patient, but to change the, uh, the, 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 the antibodies, and it, sorry, the, the, the antigens that are expressed. And so I'll, I'll just f finish on this movie here. So on the left hand side you can see breast cancer cells which are, are, are shown with the red dots and we put in some CMV immunities from a healthy individual. And you can see as the, as the movie plays that the T cells, although they may interact with the cells, they don't kill them. And this is just using cetuximab. But if we paint and add on our, our, our active peptide, then in fact we see that actually very, very, um, very, very rapidly those T cells will actually um, destroy the, 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 the breast cancer cells um, as they are recognizing them as being infected with the cells. So we think this might be a, a, an entirely new way of actually thinking about immunology rather than changing the T cells. Why not change the tumor to actually match the immune response that those patients have? Thank you very much.